I'm 26 now. When I was a freshman in college, this older woman and I hooked up and she got pregnant. There was a lot of drama. My son Matthew was born and her crazy family wanted to adopt him, but my dad ended up being the one who legally adopted him. My parents, who have been divorced for 20 years, told me that they'd rather I go back to college and establish myself so I could be the father I needed to be for Matthew. I was still a kid myself. I wasn't there every day, but now I'm about to get married and my fiancé loves Matthew as much as I do. We both make good money and just bought a house. Over the years, my dad has started to treat me like I'm just Matthew's older brother. He's a young child and I'm actually a responsible adult. Basically, I want Matthew to start living with me and I'll take charge of him. My dad is being an idiot now, even going as far as to tell me that I need permission from him to spend time with my son. He's my son regardless of what paperwork my parents made me sign. A lot of things bother me about how my dad is taking care of my son, and my mom sides with him every time. I would do things very differently. I reminded them that my goal was to take him back, and my dad said, that's not going to happen. I reminded him that he is not his dad and never will be. Then I told him that I didn't even agree with how he was running things and I could do better. Why should I ask my dad's permission to take my kid out with my girlfriend who will be his stepmom when my 19-year-old brother takes him to the beach without asking? I also should have a say in things like school and medical stuff. I'm not a teenager anymore. I know my parents had helped raise my son that I had had when I was younger. Now that I'm older and ready to be a dad, both are making it difficult. So, am I the idiot for reminding my dad he's not my son's dad? Edit, my dad is 56. He'll be in his 60s when Matthew is a middle schooler. You are the idiot. Your parents adopted him. Legally, that makes them parents. Plus, he's a young child. He has a home and a stable life. You don't get to throw that into chaos just because you feel ready now. What you want doesn't matter at all. What matters is the best interest of the child, and you've given no reasons why this child's best interest is to leave the only home he's known and the parents who have cared for him and live with you. Your dad isn't a babysitter. He isn't taking care of your child, he's raising your child, and your child is likely bonded with him, a bond that could lay a powerful foundation for the future academic achievement of your son, as well as his emotional and financial health and prosperity as an adult. Your story is all about what you and your fiancé want and says nothing about what your son wants. OP, you need to be reminded that your dad adopted Matthew. He is Matthew's dad. He's been Matthew's dad for many years. If there was a temporary custody arrangement in place saying that when you reach a certain age, you'll take over parental responsibility again, then I'll change my ruling. But you said your dad adopted him, making your dad his dad. You don't get to change your mind a few years in because it's now convenient. Oh, and your statement about, maybe I wasn't there every day, combined with the fact that your interest in being a dad started because your fiancé liked the idea, doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement. Your story implies you were forced to let your parents adopt, but also that you didn't really care about being a parent until so many years had passed. You were a legal adult when you consented to the adoption. Maybe show some appreciation. This. How many young moms have been told, you were old enough to make it, you're old enough to raise it, and had to put all life plans on hold because they got pregnant? Instead, OP got to walk away basically scot-free from an irresponsible pregnancy and is now whining and complaining about not being able to treat his legal brother like a new puppy to please his fiancé. Grow up, OP. Your chronological age isn't everything emotional maturity means a lot. My daughter is autistic and has a support dog. He's an Anatolian Shepherd, so a big scary dog. He was initially supposed to be a livestock guardian for my dad, but when I took my daughter to meet him, they kind of bonded. We ended up with him a few weeks later due to him being generally bad at his job, and he now works to support my daughter, and she absolutely loves him. This is all to say we have a very big dog who looks very mean sometimes. He's sweet as anything, though. My cousin's girlfriend is terrified of dogs. The first time she saw him, she refused to come into the house. We have a pretty big house, so family meals are usually held at mine. This is obviously posing an issue, as his girlfriend won't come into my house because of the dog. We've crated him for very short periods so she could come in, but she's clearly very uncomfortable, and my daughter gets very nervous around new people without him present. 
I've explained that there isn't any compromise to make and my cousin is quite annoyed, asking why we couldn't just leave the dog home and eat elsewhere. Honestly, I wouldn't mind as I could just leave my daughter with her mom, but no one else wants to cook, lol. In my opinion, if he wants to reinforce family bonding so much, he should offer to cook. Anyway, it's a serious issue right now and causing arguments within the family. It all came to a head last night when they dropped off my dad and he's staying for Christmas. Anyway, my cousin started yelling and asked me why I hated his girlfriend so much and couldn't accommodate her. I told him his girlfriend's fears weren't as important to me as my daughter's comfort. My dad ended up cooling it down and essentially called me an idiot. She can't control her fears and all that. So, am I the idiot? I feel a little bad, but my daughter's comfort is more important. Not the idiot. Imagine coming into your home, eating your food, and expecting you to get rid of the dog that calms your daughter. It's funny how they can all complain, but none offer to open their home and bank account to change house. Ask him and your dad why they both hate your daughter, since they both like to open their entitled mouth to spew ridiculousness. The sheer audacity. Honestly, lol, I was like, who gave you the right? Your cousin's girlfriend can't control her fears? That's nice. Your autistic daughter can't control her fears and it's her damn house. Your cousin and dad both need to get over themselves before they stop getting invited for Christmas. Is this dog a certified support dog? Or have you, as the parent, labelled him as a support dog and are just using the term? From what I understand, it's not a legit service dog. It wasn't prescribed by a doctor and never had any kind of official training. I would say you are the idiot for using a dog as a crutch for your kid instead of working on fixing her issues. It's not a real service dog, so she won't be able to take him everywhere, anytime, and sooner or later she'll be in a situation where her dog is not allowed or welcomed. Just like the current situation, you need to figure out with her doctor how to get over her insecurities without relying on an unreliable source of comfort. One thing my mom does that my wife hates is using the word which in place of you in a sentence. Previously, I set a boundary that if my mom called either of us a witch, we would leave and not visit for X amount of time. But now that we live here, she laughs and tells me to please go. So my hands are quite literally tied. Well, tonight, my mom came down to go to a work Christmas party and my mother-in-law, who was visiting, commented about how her outfit would get her fired. My mom said, Witch, I'm the boss, no one can fire me. My wife gave me a look, but I just shrugged because I felt mother-in-law was rude. My wife spoke up and said that I was a coward and she was going to remind my mom of our boundary and we were sick of how she used that word. My mom then looked at my wife and said, Okay, I'll say something worse next time, dumb witch. I was in shock and yelled at her to shut the heck up and told her I hated her. She left for her party and I thought it was over, but my wife and mother-in-law both began telling me how I needed to set consequences for my mom and how it shouldn't be so easy for her to insult my wife. I responded that we lost our right to set boundaries when we moved into her house. I don't like it either, but she owns our lives and I'm not going to make a fool of myself and come off as some choosy beggar. I said for now, she really can say what she wants. Mother-in-law muttered something under her breath and my wife began to scream at me. My wife is currently not speaking to me and says I can't come into her room tonight. She called me weak and told me to crawl in bed with my mom, which honestly hurt because my mom has multiple locks on her door as she doesn't trust us. So, am I the idiot for telling my wife I can't enforce boundaries with my mom? Not the idiot! At least you realise you're two broke adults with a child living with your mother, and your mother has made it abundantly clear if you don't like it, move out. If your wife wants boundaries, she needs to move out, and your wife can't tell anyone where they can go in a home she's squatting in because she's a broke damn adult with a child living with her mother-in-law. So, let that sink in. You're two broke adults without many options. Your wife needs to understand she doesn't have squat or a window to throw it out of. She does not have the upper hand or moral high ground. This is a great summation of the situation. Mother-in-law doesn't want you there, but she didn't throw you out on the street. So shut up and be grateful you have a roof over your head. An adult up and get your act together so you can take care of yourselves in your own home. Then you get to set boundaries. Until then, suck it up if you want to continue to have a roof over your head. This exactly.
Just what boundaries does your wife want to be enforced? Like, what consequences is she going to make her mother-in-law face in her own home? Ask her what specifically she'd like and how exactly does she think she can get your mom to agree to what she wants? My grandmother used to say, when your hand is in the lion's mouth, you draw it out carefully. Your mom doesn't want you living there and your mother-in-law's husband said he'd divorce her if you moved in with them. What is wrong with you and your wife that no one wants you living with them? Everyone's the idiot here. I don't know how you ended up so broke that living with the most obnoxious, toxic witch I've heard of in a long time is your only alternative. Go find a damn family homeless shelter, a church outreach. Literally nearly anything would be better than staying in this hellhole you've brought your family to. Between all of you, I honestly fear for your child because I don't see how any baby can grow up sane in this collection. It's me, 38 male, my girlfriend Amber, 37, my daughter Tween and my ex-wife Cara, 38. We got married young and it wasn't a good marriage. Cara was traditionally attractive and after we married she acted like she settled and never stopped anyone from suggesting she was better looking. When our daughter was little, she didn't stop going out because her friends were single. Every weekend I was at home watching our kid. During this time I became friends with my daughter's teacher, Amber. She was previously divorced and became someone I confided with. She would constantly hype me up about myself. Then some of my friends saw Kara flirting with guys at a bar. I ask her about it. She says I was being jealous and should just be happy that she chose me. That was the final straw and we divorced seven years ago. After we divorced, Amber and I became very close friends. Kara's convinced that Amber broke up our marriage, even though I've said countless times she never once told me to do that. Amber and I didn't start dating until four years after my divorce. We were just good friends, and then, eventually, everything clicked four years later, and multiple partners in between. So now to my ex-wife issues. So Amber and my daughter have formed a very close friendship. Amber was Aunt Amber for three years when my daughter was young, so lots of Christmas and birthday gifts. She helped me with some of the girl-dad things I didn't know how to do. Now we've been dating for four years, so she's known Amber for a total of seven years. Amber's sister is getting married and has asked my daughter to be a bridesmaid. Part of being a bridesmaid is going to the bachelorette party, which is at a beach about five hours from where we live, so I have no problem with her going with Amber. They've spent time alone plenty of times and the woman is a teacher. I have no concerns. My ex-wife is blowing up about it saying she doesn't trust the situation and it's against the rules of custody to allow her overnight without my supervision. I said that wasn't true, and if she wanted to make a big deal about it, then I'll go to the bachelorette party, rent a nearby hotel room and say I was in the vicinity in case of emergency. My wife's sister isn't that wild of a person. I don't see this becoming out of hand. The other issue my ex has is a tattoo that will happen after the trip. My girlfriend wants a legacy tattoo, which is going to be a tree with her grandma's name, my mom's name, her sister's name, and then my daughter's name. It's like a family tattoo. We asked my daughter if she had any issues with it. She didn't and absolutely loved the idea of it. My ex-wife is telling my parents about it now, saying it, she is uncomfortable and I don't care. I said personally it doesn't bother me and it's not harming anyone, so I plan to allow for both. My ex is now dragging my name through the mud to our mutual friends about it. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. Your ex sounds a bit unreasonable about many things, but a child being invited to an overnight bachelorette party isn't one of them. What group of adults wants a child at a bachelorette party? What's their plan for the party? What are the activities planned? Will they be eating and drinking? Who will be there? Does everyone know a child would be present? It's perfectly reasonable for your ex to demand answers to those questions, and you should be doing the same for yourself before letting her attend. Not the idiot. My bachelorette party entailed a kayaking outing, lunch at a historical pub, dinner at a fancy restaurant, and hanging out at a dueling pianos bar. We were back by 10.30. I know it's not your typical drunken bar crawl, but not all bachelorette weekends are centred around alcohol. Disagree? OP spent a lot of time giving us unnecessary backstory designed to make his ex look bad, but it was also very subjective. Do we really need to know that she was often told she was more attractive? 
I'm always extra suspicious when the OP pumps so much unrelated bias into the story. Everyone's the idiot here because there is more missing here. There also seems to be a disregard for the fact your girlfriend has no parental rights over your daughter. Still, you take into account her opinion, but refuse to take into consideration your daughter's mother's input. The tattoo is weird as heck. Your girlfriend is just a girlfriend. She isn't even a step-parent. Your daughter does not have a branch on her family tree. My husband usually wakes up early so he can work out daily. During our vacation, our son, a young toddler, was sleeping in the same bed as us, as he wouldn't sleep otherwise. Every single time my husband got up to exercise, it would wake our son up, which meant I had to wake up at 5am too. A lot of the time, our son would be in a bad mood from having been woken up early too, so it wasn't ideal. After the fourth day, I asked him to stop waking up early to exercise for the rest of our two-week vacation. He told me he would be more careful not to wake our son up, but I told him our son would wake up as soon as he left the bed, so he had to stop. We argued over it, but he did eventually agree to stop reluctantly, even though it meant he couldn't exercise as much as he wanted to without missing time with his family, and it also meant he couldn't work out with his brother, which his brother wasn't happy about. Was I the idiot for making him stop? Not the idiot. Your husband's desire to spend time with his brother is understandable, but if he lives with light sleepers, that's just how it is. Sometimes you've got to make sacrifices. Your wanting to not be woken up at some off hour of the early morning is a completely reasonable request. Let the brothers share a room if they want to get up that early. You are the idiot. Why is the toddler sleeping in the parents' bed? The amount of helicopter parents nowadays is freaking ridiculous. Just put the kid to bed somewhere else. Why are they indulging in this behavior anyways? If the kid doesn't sleep in their bed at home, he shouldn't be doing it on vacation. I don't get the response, why is your child in your bed? Neither of my two kids at that age would sleep without us in the bed with them if we were in an unfamiliar place. They've slept in their own bed since the day they came home from the hospital. I, a fully grown adult, can't sleep well in an unfamiliar place. You're not the idiot, OP. You wake the baby, they're yours to handle now. Your husband can find another time during the day to work out if it's that important to him. <laughs>